Joining us now on the Deseret First Credit Union hotline is former Mountain West Conference Defensive Player of the Year, BYU's all-time steals leader and standout, Jackson Emery. Jackson, welcome back to the show, man. Guys, it's great to be on, and I love uh, love the conversation about Rocky. One oh, of the all-time great series. Let's start. Let's oh, yes. start there. What is the greatest Rocky movie, Jackson? <laughs> well, you know, I love all of them, obviously, but uh, if I had to go for like the defining movie, which set Rocky. Uh, I think into just uh, stardom was Rocky II. Yes! Oh, okay. Yes, Jackson! Thank you. Thank you for having a credible, reasonable opinion. I have to say, though, on on the poll question I threw out, that is last. <laughs> Rocky II is last. People don't know what's going on. <laughs> if you had to make a second Rocky, choice, would it be Rocky IV, the, though? The Russian. What's, what's that? Yeah. I know everyone loves Rocky IV because he beats the Russian, and the Russian, you know, killed Apollo Creed. But at the end of the day, Rocky II is what really cements his legacy, and that's where he really turned into, you know, Rocky, and where he learned what he needs to put into his, his you know, his effort and his hard work in order to be ta- become an all-time great. Wow, Jackson, really breaking that one down. Oh, I, I like appreciate that. that you are bringing <laughs> logic and sense to this conversation, Jackson. Yes, you have done well, my friend. All Bad right, let's force. let's talk about some <laughs> basketball right now. Uh, just out of curiosity, if Dave Rose said to you, hey, Jackson, you have one game of eligibility. We want you to play on Thursday. How many minutes could you give him? I got to at least give it, depending on at a time. That's that's the key right there. If you said, "Hey, we're going to give you two minutes spurts, <laughs> two minutes every media timeout," I could for sure okay. give him at least twenty. <laughs> as long as you break it up. Yeah, if you give me six minutes, then yeah, you're you're going towards probably like thirteen or fourteen minutes. It's about pace. So, Jackson, where did you expect this BYU team to be at this point in the season versus where they are? Yeah. Um, it's funny because when you look at the talent, you're, you're obviously looking at the, the the ability that they have to beat top tier teams, but you also look at the the youth. You look at the the variables of not having a lot of players for the last couple of years who played collegiate basketball. A bunch of moving pieces. Uh, you could also see them struggle a little bit, and I think it's uh, gone towards that they've struggled a little more than I expected, um, especially against teams that you know they are more talented than. And so I was hoping at this point of the season we had some key signature wins. I was hoping that we would beat either Illinois or USC. Um, I was hoping that we wouldn't lose to the teams that we should have not lost against, uh, such as UVU, uh, San Diego, Santa Clara. Um, But at the same time, I mean, that's kind of been the story of this team this year is inconsistent road play, uh, not being able to defend the three-point line against teams that – um, really have no business playing against BYU. But uh, I think that's just part of the learning process for this bunch of guys. And hopefully um, long-term, that it's a great learning lesson that you have to show up to every game, you have to prepare for every team, and you have to perform at a high level uh, anytime you step on the floor. Does inconsistent road play not scream youth for this specific BYU basketball team, I and mean, we're talking about a team that has one senior, and he is a graduate transfer in L.J. Rose. Losing Kyle Davis, I think, has had a bigger effect on this team than uh, many want to give it attention to. What do you What do you think about the youth excuse, if you will, Jackson? Yeah, a lot of people, you know, don't want to hear that, and they're saying it's about time they mature. Um, you know, look look around the country. Look at Duke, for example. Duke has struggled over the past month. And a lot of it has to do with their youth. And those guys actually have veteran players. They have Grace Allen. They have uh, Luke uh, what is it, Kennard. They have uh, you know um, Jefferson. So they have a bunch of guys that they can also lean on. But those guys have struggled because they've had to depend on some of their younger talent. And you even look at you know teams like Kentucky. When you look at top tier teams, they they seem to go through these ebbs and flows. Um, unfortunately. For BYU, the, these ebbs and flows have continued, I feel like, a lot longer than some of these other teams. But they haven't had any 
senior to really rely on. And Kyle Davis, I was hoping to, that would be that anchor, and then he went down with an injury. And even though L.J. Rose is a senior, he hasn't played ball in two years. So there's so many new pieces, moving pieces, not a lot of veteran leadership to lean on that you were hoping these guys would mature quicker than uh, they have been. But I think we're seeing glimpses at times of what they're capable of doing. There are always expectations heading into a year. But this year, they're, they're, the, those expectations seem to be really, really high, despite this team being unproven together at this level. So my question to you is, how do the expectations of others affect a team? Well, it shouldn't, it shouldn't really affect them at all. Um, when I played, my expectations were always much higher than the public's, and I think that's what made myself you know, a good player. I think that's what made my teammates uh, better players is that we had expectations to do more than what the public thought. Um, you know, in particular, I remember my senior year media day, uh, they were asking, you know, how do you like the schedule? What do you think of it? And I, essentially I just said, you know, I like every single game. Every game I see on there is winnable. We should win every game. And, you know, the, you know, then it was funny. They poked fun. I think it was Rod Sundell. He even said, you know, so you think you should go undefeated? And I said, nah, I'd, I don't think that. I think that I, we can win every single game. And if you don't have that mentality as a player, um, then that's, that's not the guy that I want to play with. But it, at the, I know these guys, they, they think they can win every single game. Um, but then it has to translate into preparation and practice and off-season workouts. There's so much that goes into that. But, uh, you know, public perception, public expectations, everyone sh- thinks you should always win. Um, they're probably going to – you know, think most of them are probably saying, hey, they'll probably lose to Gonzaga. But if these guys aren't going to that game thinking they should win this, then, I mean, there's there's something that's not right with their focus and mentality. We've been asking people to give us the one thing that's giving them hope against Gonzaga. And Ken Pomeroy has given BYU a 9% chance to win on their home floor. TeamRankings.com, 18%. Some people think that's too high because of what Gonzaga has done, and they bring in the number one ranking in the country. But what's, what's the one laurel that you rest BYU's hope on in this game against the Zags, Jackson? <laughs> Pressure. Um, what I mean by that is – you know, we're not we're not oblivious. BYU right now is not in the NCAA tournament running. They don't have the resume. Um, they've lost to teams that they shouldn't have lost to. So these guys should be playing loose. Like there's no pressure. They're they're not in the running right now for a conference championship. Uh, all the pressures on Gonzaga. They're number one. All the talks around them. All the media. All the hype. Everything on ESPN. So these guys are feeling the pressure. They have not lost a game yet. Can they go undefeated? Um, I've been in those scenarios where you're climbing the ranks and you haven't lost, and you, you feel a little bit of that pressure. There's a little bit of that looking over your shoulder. When are we going to lose? Who's going to sneak up on us? And uh, I think this is, you know, totally a pressure game for them and for us. I mean, it shouldn't be too much of a pressure. We're we're supposed to lose, according to the media and according to the fans. It's so it's one of those things. If you come in, you play loose, trust your teammates, play with the energy that the crowd gives you. I think uh, we could surprise them on our home floor. Yeah, when's the last time BYU was a 15-point underdog on their home floor and had less than a 10% chance to beat a team on the Marriott Center floor? So I agree with you 100%. BYU should feel loose and feel no pressure because the expectations are all that Gonzaga is going to come in here and do something that teams don't do often. That's blow out BYU. Yeah, and I, I like you said, I don't even remember the last time. Yeah, a ten plus point underdog on your home floor. I mean, that tells you uh, the respect that Gonzaga has, and maybe the disrespect that they have for BYU. But uh, use that as a you know a chip on your shoulder. Go out there, and I mean, if that was me, I would I would feel disrespected and want to make sure that I prove that wrong. Well, playing off that, then when you get an opportunity to have the number one team coming into your building. What does a game like that do for a player's mentality? Hopefully it gets them excited. You know, gets them excited again against uh, you know to play basketball. Obviously the, it hasn't been the season that these guys have wanted, but this is exactly the game that can project your season into, you know, a, a better a better situation. I mean, that's what I'm looking at is it's like guys, you, you go win this game, then you should have confidence that you should beat any team. 
And so I'm hoping that these guys are preparing the way they should mentally when they're practicing as well as, you know, just in the off hours during the week that they take extra time to review the scouting report and game film and maybe watch some games of Gonzaga and and really understand that this is, this is not just one game. This is a game that can uh, get you going for the rest of the season heading into the West Coast Conference tournament play. Let's talk about the, uh, the things that Jason and I have already offered our opinions on, and that is uh, specifically who's the one guy for BYU you feel like has to have a big game for the Cougars to be in it? Yeah, I think uh, ultimately we all know Eric Mika has to have a good game. I mean, he, our, our offense right now is built around him inside out. If they shut Eric down, then we're in trouble. But Eric, we know, is probably going to get his points as long as he doesn't get in foul trouble. But I think the next you know, player that has to play really well is either TJ or Nick. I mean, those guys got to come in. We got to, if we don't hit outside shots, they're going to collapse on Mika. They're, they're going to be, they're too talented of a team and they're too well coached uh, to not understand, hey, they're not hitting outside shots. Let's double Mika, make them beat us from the perimeter. So we have to have good guard play in order to free things up for Eric. And then everything just opens up, spacing's better, and these guys will play with a lot more confidence. Nick Emery with us on BYU Sports Nation, joining us on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline. Or excuse me, Jackson Emery with us. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me that hasn't happened a time or 7,000, Jackson. Hey, honestly, right? At least just, just call me Emery. Then they don't know who it is. <laughs> now, I did notice something that Nick uh, told me the other day when I said, okay, what, what was the difference between uh, your, your early defense and why, why you've picked it up this season and, and why you feel like you're the guy now, the lockdown defender? And he said, well, my brother got after me. What did you say to Nick? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know what time. I, Nick and I have always had a lot of conversations. I, it, it's funny. You know, you look at defense, and defense is its kind of a poor man's job. Not a lot of people enjoy doing it. Um, it's not glamorous. It's not rewarding. Um, and but it's extremely valuable. It is essential for championships. It's essential for winning. And I told Nick, you know, this is where the energy starts. Uh, the last few seasons, last four or five years, you know, since you know I've graduated and since we've graduated in 2011, it feels like our, our defensive play, there hasn't been that urgency. I mean, we've let teams score 80, 90 points on us. We're allowing 70-plus points a game, and that's just not – That's just not how you can win. Your margin of error starts to decrease dramatically. And if you get into these games where it's a shootout with Portland or anyone else and you lose those games, that can uh, ruin your entire season. So I told them it starts on that side. Shots will drop. Shots will not drop at times. But your defensive play and effort should never deviate. You should always give the same effort, the same focus, the same diligence in terms of what you're doing. And that will carry through all, you know, the rest of your teammates that are on the floor, the rest of the four guys, and someone's got to set the tone. And uh, I feel like he's really brought that um, that nastiness. He plays with a little bit of a chip on his shoulder. Um, he plays hard. And uh, you, you might not like playing against him, but if you're cheering or playing with him, uh, you, you definitely love it. Follow him at Jackson Emery 4 on the Twitter machine. Former Mountain West Conference Defensive Player of the Year, Jackson Emery with us. Thanks, Jackson, for the time. Always always nice to get the real talk, man. Let's do it again soon. Hey, it's great, guys. And hopefully uh, we get the win on Thursday. Look forward to a packed Marriott Center, and let's get the season back on track. All right, man. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Jackson.